let's get through the news. Stop the music. It's time for news. Let's head over into the drone newsosphere with our buddy Jeff Sills. He's got all the news for us, and there's lots of it. What's happening, buddy? Yeah, there's a lot of it, and it's all over the place. Um, so we'll go ahead and start getting through this kind of quick. The first one that comes out of the UAE, uh, this is an area that doesn't have an awful lot of rainfall, about an average of 3.9 inches of rain per year. They've come up with a really exciting new way of uh, using drones to seed clouds. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It looks like they're, they're just flying around, but uh, I guess they're doing something, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the plan involves launching unmanned aerial vehicles uh, that emit electrical charges, and this provokes water from falling from the clouds. And so it's the same thing that they do with aircraft. Uh, Jason, you would probably be familiar with the old they seeding do it, project. Yeah. They do it, um, yep. And they, the they really do? They really do the that? Drone. Yeah. Jason, yeah, do they really? Absolutely. In, in, man, in manned aviation, they fly a little like 172s and stuff like mine. Get out of here. And they seed clouds. To, to stimulate rainfall. Yeah, they would Shut fire. Uh, that's the word they use. That's that is their word, not Dude, mine, Kenneth. What? Okay, because you know, uh, for years and years, there's always been some guy trying to help the farmers by doing a rain dance or shooting <laughs> something out of a cannon. You know, uh, but they're really doing that. They're for real season. And they have to yeah. be very careful in how they do it because of the weather patterns as well. That you could create storms. In places they don't need storms, right? So you have to think of how the weather is, how the, how long these clouds are going to build for as they travel all the way across the country to then rain here. Exactly. There's a lot yeah. of like math into it. It's it's but, fascinating science if you but, look at it. But is it electrical charges that's doing it, or don't they seed it by putting some kind of chemical in there? I don't know. Well, the the method that they use this one, the drones are going to be using an electrical charge, but the aircraft would would use uh, fine particles of salt or silver iodide. Okay. Uh, they would fire into the, the clouds to provoke uh, the consolidation of mist into raindrops. Wow. Ken, haven't you ever seen those chemtrails? I mean, that's what they're doing. Oh, the chem well, I thought Did the it? chemtrails were uh, uh, sent by Bill Gates to control our minds. Yes, yeah, it's that's what CIA I thought cover. the chemtrails were for. <laughs> Every time I see one, I go outside and go, yes, Bill, control me. <laughs> All right. All right. Back to you in the newsroom. <laughs> All right. So next in the news, uh, this one I'm actually looking forward to myself. There's a drone soccer league coming to the United States. Cool. Uh, yeah, this is neat. You like this. Okay. Tell us about it. So two teams of three to five drone pilots enter a caged arena with drones that are enclosed in these plastic fears. Uh, hence giving them the soccer ball look. And the idea is to uh, use a designated striker to pilot the drone through the opponent's goal. And, of course, the other drones then try to stop or block or prevent that person okay. from flying I, through. That's really cool and very creative. But why do they call it soccer? Why don't they call it, like, a uh, drone ball or something? Because nobody's using their feet on the controllers. Right? Um, so it's not soccer. Prime Primarily because the the idea behind it is around the same idea of soccer, so I guess that would be the reason why they just call it drone soccer. Okay, and in Europe, it's, it's cool. still called drone football, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So the first tournament's going to be in uh, Colorado Springs this July during the Rocky Mountain State Games, uh, and the competition is open to both adults and youth under seventeen. Okay. All so right. definitely something to look forward to. Uh, Sky Drone. Uh, these guys make the drone in the box, and they've done a lot of beyond visual line of sight flying. They've come out with something new. Uh, their drones now use 5G connectivity. Um, so essentially, the range issue that they had had is sort of out the window now. They have sort of unlimited control uh, when it comes to range using the, the 5G network. Um, and so they're one of the first to, I think, uh, master the 5G integration with their drones. Uh, I know that a lot of uh, companies have, have been experimenting with it and using it to transition drones and, at larger uh, distances, but this is the first one that I've seen that's a, a commercially available platform. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's neat, I guess. Sky For Drone, it's kind of a obvious name, right? we got a drone which goes in the sky. What do you want to call it? I don't know. I got nothing. Oh, wait. 
<laughs> I just have a hard time, at, you know, anytime now someone says drone in a box, I just think of Ken's song oh, man. every single time. Oh, that was yeah. many episodes ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah I, I think of your drone in the box song. I, it still haunts me. I'll have to break out my boy band beard and do that again sometime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, a very inventive pilot uh, has come up with something really unique. Uh, his name is Ian Pagnum. And he turned the footage from his Skydio into a real-life game of Morio Kart. Morio Kart. Okay, this is so clever and creative. This. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, combining the ability of the Skydio to follow the target and then using augmented reality, he was able to essentially generate his own video game. This is so great. Now this guy that you can see, he's got the 1.39 subscribers. You should go to uh, Origiful and uh, subscribe. This took a lot of effort. Yeah, it did. That is the most inventive thing I have seen in years with a drone. I love that, and I can't wait to see what other creators come up with using that same technology. Oh look, he's tiny. He's just a little moment. Don't wait. How did you do? How did you? Do, I want to do that. How did you do that? Yeah. How, how did he do that? Wow. <laughs> well, he's a better. I watch this all day. He's a better video editor than a drone pilot, which is why he owns a Skydio. Oh snap! Oh, <laughs> you Skydio burn! There. Skydio! Wow! Burn. Ooh! Wow! That was, you that, went there. That was mean. Mr. D DJI FPV God, drone flyer. That was me. Here. I apologize. Let me take that back. I I take it back, and I'm sorry. That was mean. Ken's a dick. I'm sorry. Use Using my news to go dissing another time. <laughs> Skydio was probably just about to sponsor the show, too. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so well, much for that money. Oh, uh, missed call from <laughs> Skydio. Luckily, my phone's made by Skydio and it answers itself. All right. Back to you in the newsroom. Right. <laughs> so, recently, Russia commemorated Victory Day on May 9th, and uh, they decided that they were going to have themselves a traditional parade followed by a drone show. And this drone show was over one of the World War II monuments in Russia. Wow. wow. I have yet to see a cluster drone show in person. I really want to Me see one. Me either. You haven't seen uh, one, Jeff, Jason? Do you know if those are... No. Are those the Intels, do you know? Or what are they? No. These these would be uh, drones that uh, are, I guess, available in, in Russia. I don't believe that any yeah, of guess, the, right. the existing groups that I'm aware of did this show. Um, but uh, the... The, the fact that they were able to do this uh, and 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 show it to the, the people, because normally they would have huge firework shows and stuff like that. Uh, I thought this was sort of a great mm -hmm. change of pace. Uh, and cool. it's good to see more and more of the drone shows getting out there. You know, drones need that, that good sort of... Uh, Good, good, good behaviors. So yes, to speak. and 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 and, and 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 I see people in the in the chat uh, getting bent out of shape. And let me just take a moment and uh, apologize. Uh, I want to apologize to Skydio. I've been up since four a.m. and my um, I, I don't have a filter after when I get really tired. So I just want to apologize to Skydio. Sure, I I flew it for about eleven minutes before it wrapped itself around a wire. But I do love the technology, and I love you guys, too. If you want to send me a Skydio, here's the address. You can send it right here. <laughs> no, that one. Ken, did you ever think maybe, maybe it's not the drone? Maybe yeah. it's the pilot? You crash more than anybody I, I see on YouTube. Well, hey, it, I, you know what? I don't. Oh, no. That is, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I just share my crashes instead of editing them out. That's a fact, yeah. Jack. That's a fact. All right, everybody Jack. else. I just like I just like picking on you. I know, but everybody, you know, I do. I share all the crashes, and I don't edit anything out. Just so you, I'm learning along with you with all this stuff. Sure, no doubt. For years and years, but you know what? Uh, we all crash. It all happens. <laughs> we and, all and crash. Right. You can't edit it and, out of your memory. And I fix them. <laughs> That's right. All right. Fact. Yes. All right. So <laughs> next in the news, this one is really good. Uh, marine researchers are using drones to save uh, dugongs. D-U-G-O-N-G-S. Is that the pronunciation? That's right. Yep. Dugongs. 
Yeah, so this international team of collaborators have decided to use drones to save these guys. So my research mainly focuses on spatial ecology of dugongs, so looking at distribution, habitat use, movement, and also abundance, so how many dugongs there are in a certain place. And for that, I use different tools and different cutting-edge technology, such as aerial survey, whether it's in manned planes or using drones, but also using telemetry tools, so using GPS satellite tags that we um, fit on dugongs, or also accelerometry tags uh, that inform us on the very fine scale movement of those animals. Catching dugongs is a bit like water bull riding. It's, uh, it's very rough. Uh, an animal can weigh half a ton and it's very powerful. So you need to be very careful. It's something that not everyone um, can do. And, it's, uh, and safety is very important both for the animal and, and, uh, and the catching team. Yeah, you know, it's, it's important to keep these animals safe and don't let them go extinct and take care of these mermaids of the sea because if we don't, they could be dugong forever. <laughs> a couple of those for you there. Uh. Is, it, is it like a, a, a manatee? I, I don't, I'm not familiar with what a dugong is. I, it's, not... in, it's in that family, yeah. It's, it's, like a, it's, like an, it's like you take a seal and, and you... No. The wa a walrus. Take a walrus, take it away its, mm -hmm. its, its, its tusks, ugly it mm -hmm. up a bit, make it fatter, boom, there's your dugong. <laughs> and a little narwhal I, in there, too. I <laughs> just, I, I just want to meet the first guy that came along one, you know, years and years and years ago that sat there and looked at it and goes, you know what? We need to name that thing. What do you want to name it? Dugong. Well, what, look, I, I'm, I'm not going to get into it, and I know we have... Uh, inf children watching but uh the fact <laughs> the facts are out there there's a rumor about dugongs the mermaids of the sea uh, uh in your spare time after the stream go ahead and google what the pirates supposedly used to do to them <laughs> and that's all i'm saying back to you in the news oh room. god yes thank you very much <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's yeah, move yeah. on oh yeah all right so Waste uh, across the globe in the oceans has become, uh, a, I guess, a, a big issue. And several countries, England, Dubai, Rotterdam, you know, Baltimore, San Francisco, everywhere across the, the world, trash and debris that builds up in these places gets bad. And a very interesting new initiative has started off using drones Ran and drone ships presents to catch these. The Waste Shock. The Waste Shock eats trash and can swim for 16 hours a day wow. up to 350 kilograms of trash at a time it produces zero carbon emissions it's friendly to animals and it's compact and agile waste shock collects friendly to animals that won't fit in there right <laughs> you get a little teeny bird you're gonna have an unsuspecting bird from Ran Marine I'm pretty sure that was an Xbox controller can we go back I'm almost positive that was an Xbox controller yeah, I think it was. was. I think you're right. Let me see. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. I can't go back. I can't, that's okay. I can't go back. So but, this is like a Roomba of the sea is what it is, yeah. right? I mean, that's what yeah. it really is. It's a water Roomba. <laughs> that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah I love yeah. it. But we'd need one the size of an aircraft carrier to get some of the garbage out of the Pacific oh, yeah. Ocean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and and I'm, there are there's a there's a very inventive young man that came up with an idea of one of those that is a very large machine that sits there and scoops the the trash out of uh, channels and waterways and stuff. That's amazing to sit there and watch because uh, you know the thing's completely automated and and they can sit there and just come and take the packages away and it never stops going. It's it's an impressive piece of machinery. So uh, I'm glad to see this is happening. You know, it's good it's yeah. good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, NASA Perseverance rover has uh, been all active on the on the on Mars surface. Um, the first one uh, that we have from them is that when the drone recently flew, one of the devices that is actually on the rover uh, is acts as a microphone and was able to listen to the drone as it flew. And this is the first time that we've ever heard something fly on another planet. Yeah, check this out. So, listen. You can hear the flutter. 2,537 RPM.
Isn't that interesting? You're hearing a drone fly on Mars. Where are you going, buddy? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy, come back. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is great, isn't it? Yeah. it is, beyond, I, is that beyond visual line of sight? If it's well, on Mars? Yeah, I don't think the FAA has jurisdiction on Mars. Another, uh, and, I, and I'll just go no, ahead and do this. No, the Perseverance rover is the is the designated spotter. Oh, okay. visual observer. There you uh, go. I got yeah, you. good point. Um, <laughs> you want to see some onboard footage from the drone on Mars too? You got to yeah, check this, this out. Yeah, this is the other. This is the other footage that is amazing. So, uh, it's not moving very fast at all. But what you're going to see from the navigation camera here in a second. So you see this? The shutter speed has to be unbelievably fast to ca to stop the the shadow of the props spinning at 3000 whatever rpm. Isn't wow. That, isn't that incredible? That's the navigation camera. Wow. And then here's the actual video from it. That's how fast it moves. Look at that. It's drone footage from freaking Mars. We're living in That's the future, cool. man. We're living in the future. Ah, oh, truly isn't that amazing great? stuff. I want to see it again. I want to see it again. I want to see it again. It's so cool. Look at that. It's Mars. It's oh, super cool. I'm geeking out on that. That is just. That's amazing. That is awesome. I'm such a nerd. yeah. I I would imagine. Every single rover that we send up there is going to start coming along with these devices to sit there and, and extend their ability to reach different areas and to be able to see things from different angles. That right there is a game changer from the exploration sense on Mars. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Yeah, that's amazing. Awesome. All right, so Manchester City happens to have a football team, Manchester United, and they uh, are celebrating their third Premier League title in four years with this amazing footage. A lot more I, companies are doing this type of fly-through stuff, and I think it's great. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, what did we look at last time? That uh, was the Mercedes building, I think, or something. It's Oh, yeah, and the movie theaters and bowling alleys and movie, all kinds of stuff. It's, it's so cool. Yeah, this is their Etihad Stadium. Oh, they cover up the seats when nobody's there? Well, that's nice. And of course, they advertise on top of it. They're not yeah. dumb. Wow. Now he flies around the stadium for a little bit. I'm going to fast forward this just because it's kind of a long. Yeah, I want to get back inside. Okay, yeah, yeah. We go around the net. Blah, blah, blah. More soccer stuff. Okay, here we go. Cool. <laughs> it's a pretty snazzy stadium. Yeah. Cool. Any word on the setup of what drone was used and camera and all that, Jeff? Uh, I don't believe that they have any information as to uh, the type of drone or what Ooh. they use. This was primarily just uh, from the high level, from the Manchester City itself. Um, but yeah, the amazing footage. And then How at many the times end, do you think they go and walk this and practice this to get this one seamless? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. You can't just go in there and throw the goggles on and do this. It takes a few runs. Now, I'm going to fast well, forward to the end where, where uh, he goes. I won't fast forward. It's still cool. But he comes down and he flies around their trophy, which wow. they have in the middle. Wow. Look at that. That is awesome. Great job on that. I so could, cool. I could watch that kind of footage all day. Oh, all right. absolutely. So, Very all cool. right. So next we have uh, in Minnesota, they have recently, uh, I guess, taken the next step in or organ transplant deliveries. Uh, pilot Ryan Henderson recently joined uh, them to fly a human pancreas by drone. This is the first ever drone test flight carrying a human pancreas. That's within the box right there. The historic flight transported a research pancreas from Mercy Hospital in Coon Rapids 10 miles over the Mississippi River and then back to the hospital. Again, that was a test flight. Joining us live to talk about that flight 
and maybe the future of this is lead pilot Ryan Henderson. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning. Thanks for having me. This is crazy. This sounds like it's like, you know, space talk and oh, years and years away, but this is really potentially what we could see in the near future. So tell us a little bit about this historic flight and, and how you're feeling about it this morning. Oh, sure, of course. Well, we're feeling great and uh, super happy to be uh, and had the opportunity to work with LifeSource, uh, Mercy Hospital, and Alina Health uh, for the opportunity to do something like this. As you said, this was a historic flight, first time ever that a pancreas has been flown on an unmanned system. Um, we want to make sure that uh, these things uh, are moving forward and progressing, not only for the unmanned system uh, industry, but also for organ awareness. The flight was just a little over 23 minutes and a uh, little over 10 miles in duration. We're super excited about it. Yeah, this is, you know, you, maybe you're asking, well, why would you do that? Why don't you just drive it over there? Well, sometimes these organ transplants are time sensitive. And sometimes yes. the, 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 the medical center where the organ is uh, harvested isn't close enough to where it's going to be put into the new patient. And so this is absolutely life-saving stuff happening here. Love it. Yeah, and the, the expense, you know, for, for in the past, they would use helicopters to go from, you mm -hmm. know, hospital to hospital. And it was always based on the fact that the hospital had to have a helipad or some ability for it to be able to service the helicopter. Uh, or, you know, in the case of an ambulance, you can't predict what kind of traffic you're going to run into. So having it a drone, the drone can go to a, a hospital that doesn't have a helipad and still offer that type of service to a hospital that traditionally in the past would not have been able to, to conduct those same types of operations, thus expanding the ability for medical uh, practices in larger areas. I wonder I'm, how many I, organs I become uh, unviable just because they didn't get there in time. This will change that. Yeah. It's well, great. yeah. Think about weather, too. I mean, a helicopter can't dispatch because of weather or whatever that is. Traffic jam, like you said, it's it's super cool. But, Ken, I'm going to vote you missed the mark. You could have been the first to fly a pancreas. I don't know why you didn't think of it, man. Oh, I'm kind of disappointed. In I you. have so many other firsts. Why didn't I think of the pancreas? I don't know. How about a, a, Has anybody done the spleen yet? I'm gonna, <laughs> That's I'm, you. That's your Guinness I, record. I, I'm going to staple a spleen to a to FPV quad. And I'll be the first to fly a spleen acro. Mm. <laughs> the acro spleen. Like Million it. views. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff. <laughs> All right. So next we have uh, a company, Hexatronics, is releasing for, I guess, anybody, uh, their global drone docking station. And this is a, a really unique, wonderful little device. Um, it's a metal body design. It has robotic battery swapping capabilities. Um, and this is essentially a drone nest. Okay, so you take your drone, you put it in the pizza oven, and how long do you cook it for? 30, 30 minutes? <laughs> However long it takes to recharge the battery. But the nice thing What's is, up with is that? that... Come on, that's a pizza oven. That's a pizza oven. What do you want on your drone? You want pepperonis? You want a Hawaiian drone? That's crazy. It's a pizza. It's a pizza oven. Does it does it charge in the oven or does it swap the battery? Oh, uh, I think there's a little man it's... in there. There's a little man, and he lives in the box. Is it? He's related to the man that turns off the light in your refrigerator, and he comes out, and he's just a little four inch high guy. He has a buddy. It's 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 a two little man job, and they get they're in there like, okay, on three, we're gonna pull this battery out, and they replace it, and you never see him because he's in the he's in the pizza oven. Did I mention I've been up since 4 a.m. and I'm a little rammy? Jeff, you good, buddy? You, you, you telling me? Okay. <laughs> All right, let's continue. <laughs> All right. So next in the news, uh, the Royal Mail conducted uh, or conducted its recently its first drone delivery to uh, an island uh, off the U.K. coast, uh, the Isle of Sicily. Okay. And, or Sicily? S-C-I-L-L-Y. I guess it's silly. Um, and this particular island, uh, you know, all of, they would normally get all of their supplies, either by boat, you know, et cetera. Uh, it's only a 70-mile uh, flight. And so they're using drones now to deliver uh, stuff back and forth between the island. Uh, everything from, you know, large twin-engine, wind racer UAVs to smaller multi uh multi-engined uh, or multi-motored uh, drones to deliver s smaller packages. Um, they have a mix 
of devices depending on the type of mail that needs to be deserved or delivered. Huh. Um, but this is really exciting stuff. I'm glad to see the Royal Mail using a variety of technology to oh, that's neat. Yeah. That is really cool. Um now speaking of mail, just just, just a, a very quick aside. I know the news is already 3 hours long, but I just wanted to mention this. Uh, one of our viewers uh hit oh, I forget his name. He lives in Iraq. Okay? And he won some some Freewell filters. One of our sponsors tonight. Thank you very much uh Freewell for providing the prizes. Uh, and I tried to send him some filters to Iraq, and Freewell said, nope, we don't deliver to that country. So I looked up how to send stuff, because Iraq has... No, no, I'm sorry. I Iran. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's very American of me to get those two confused. I it was Iran. It was Iran. Tehran, in fact. Anyway, so I looked up. Th their zip codes are like... 30 digits long and there's all these rules that you have to follow if you want to send something to a muslim country you know like nothing that that would offend the the culture so uh what i did was uh, philip that's his name if you're watching philip sorry about this but i sent you a set of eyeballs and it hasn't been returned to me it's been about two weeks i hope you got it you got them it was just an envelope with a, a eyeball stickers in it shouldn't offend anyone oh I did have an American flag stamp. Eh. Well, we'll see what happens. Back to you in the newsroom. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know what I don't know what's going to happen with that, but we'll see. All right. Yeah. So last in the news, and this one is really sort of spectacular. Uh, the Russian, uh, I guess, military decided that it would be a fantastic idea during the St. Petersburg fireworks to fly one of their military drones through the fireworks. Ooh. Uh, this is dangerous. So, so it's a military drone with a little toy drone on a stick. Yeah, what yeah, is what's that what they're yes, What are yes. we looking at? Yeah. So what they did was <laughs> they put uh, they they put on the front of the drone uh, a, a a famous Russian military aircraft uh, from World War II as a model, Ooh. and then they flew it through the fireworks. Well, they can do that. Yeah, I guess they can. Jason, can we fly through fireworks in this country? I, 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 I don't know that answer. I, I'm going to say it's not smart to do so. How about that? I don't know of a regulation that forbids flying through fireworks. I mean, there okay. are. There's a regulation that says reckless endangerment. And if you if if a firework hits it, it catches on fire and comes down as a flaming fireball, I'd imagine the FAA is going to slap you with reckless endangerment. Okay, because I mean... Everybody can fly at night and over people in certain situations now. Why not through fireworks? Well, it's and, going to happen. Yes. From, from, my happened. Perspective, from my perspective doing the news, I have seen numerous videos of people flying drones into fireworks displays. Um, and it's happened in the United States. I've seen it happen in, in Australia and other places. Um, and surprisingly enough, I mean, the footage itself is pretty spectacular. Now, if you're doing like a small drone, you know, like a little DJI drone or something like that. Uh, and I've even seen a guy do an FPV drum through a fireworks display, oh, that's, which that's was pretty awesome. spectacular. But this being a Russian military drone, something that's probably big, big. it's not going to hurt it. A little bit more risky than most. Well, well it's so. not going to hurt it if it's metal. But I can tell you this, in uh, 2015, I flew a Phantom 2 or 3 or whatever one was out through a fireworks display. And uh, ooh, I almost lost my drone. So you know, believe it. Think twice, because if if that gets knocked out of the sky, you're still the the pilot in control, in no command, doubt. in command. And uh, then you'll get in trouble if it hits anybody. But anyway, uh, Jeff, I'm being told by my producer that doesn't exist that we have one more piece of video, and this is just for Jeff. Um, I actually filmed this. Thank you, producer. That doesn't exist. I actually filmed this a couple weeks ago in Nashville with a camera that had a a bit of a um problem with the the light but uh, just ignore that and this is for you jeff hey jeff it's your buddy ken out the park here shelby park in nashville and i have one question for you my friend what is that what is it what is that jeff go ahead tell everybody what it is 
Oh dear God. What is it, Jeff? It looks like a melted bird. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> oh well, everybody's heard about the bird. Bird, 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 well a bird is a word. Well a bird, 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 what a bird's a well a well a bird, 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 what a bird is a word. Well a bird, bird, but bird's a well a well a bird, 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 well a bird is a word. Well a bird, bird, but bird's a well a well. Don't you know about the bird? Well, everybody's talking about the bird. Well a bird, bird, but bird's a well a well a. Oh. Second wow. verse, same as the first. No, we're not gonna do that to you, Jeff. Jeff, how you doing, buddy? Buddy, buddy, what are you drinking, pal? What are you, what are you doing here, <laughs> Jeff? Jeff, what you drinking? Coke. Coke and Coke is a mixer in your house. It's not a drink. Coke. <laughs> oh, is it okay? All right, Coke. Jeff. Well, we're gonna let you go and finish your Coke. And uh, I thank you very much for the news, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks Just put a thumb in it. By. Now get out. Well, I started out. FAA got the information and I didn't have to pay but as I took that test I needed more I guess you get what you pay for I'm learning that 107 I'm chasing The best teacher Is a guy named Jason For the good old days May not return And FPV might be grounded Delivery drones might burn Like an eagle Learning to fly Follow the rules Learning to fly Let's keep things legal will let you down Break your heart And push you around But there's a place to learn Yeah, you know where Use Heron 18 When you get there Under a cloud Get certified You'll be so proud Alright Jason, hit that guitar solo
out. <laughs> I mean, mm. I am sure Tom Petty's uh, estate is not going to hit you with a copyright slap on that one. Oh, I am, no. I am positive. Worth it.